Last time I was talking about IndyCar oval racing was which track the sport should race at. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the opposite. I'm going to be talking about oval tracks that IndyCar should not race at due to being way too dangerous, NASCAR ruining the tracks, and other reasons. This is my opinion only. With that being said, let's begin. Las Vegas Motor Speedway. When IndyCar fans see the name Las Vegas Motor Speedway, they obviously think about what went down in 2011, the huge wreck that killed Dan Weldon. Even before 2011, hell, even before the 2007 reconfiguration of the track, Las Vegas was a dangerous racetrack even with the original configuration for the sport. Back in 1996, there were so many crashes. The race still went on after the program broadcast finished, except for the West Coast, and nobody has footage of the closing laps of the race. Speaking of crashes, Steven Gregory, Tony Stewart, Stan Waddles, well, he was not injured, but he still lost consciousness, and Mark Desmore were injured from their crashes. My point is that the track was way too fast for IndyCar and way too dangerous for them to begin with. Hell, look at 2005 as well. It looked like a good race or whatever, but it was way too fast for them. Las Vegas Motor Speedway is a cookie-cutter 1.5-mile track that is not safe for IndyCar, so it's NASCAR friendly, of course. Atlanta Motor Speedway. There was a time when IndyCar raced at the original layout and the 1997 layout. IndyCar has not raced at Atlanta since 2001, and it was remembered for that huge wreck. The only reason why I don't want IndyCar race at Atlanta is because SMI turned Atlanta into a stupid speedway instead of a repave or reconfiguration back to its original layout. Atlanta Motor Speedway is narrower and it's 28 degrees. It will be way too dangerous from how high the progressive banking is. If Atlanta's stupid speedway was only repaved or even reconfigured to its or original layout, then I would have to put it on the list of Oval Jack's IndyCar should race at. Unfortunately, because SMI is dumb for turning Atlanta into what it is, for bullshit entertainment purposes, and ignoring driver safety, Atlanta is Atlanta's stupid speedway. Texas Motor Speedway 2017 to the present. What else is there to say about how current Texas is? It is awful, holy cow, for IndyCar NASCAR. SMI ruined this track, especially for IndyCar. Let's get to the context on why Texas is on this list. After the 2016 Texas Fall Cup race, Texas was getting their drainage pipe fixed so the delay for rain wouldn't last as long. What they did was take away 4 degrees of banking in turns 1 and 2, making it wider as well, while turn 3 and 4 still had 24 degrees of banking. IndyCar's 2017 race was nothing but a pack racing demolition derby survival race thanks to the 2015 through 2017 oval arrow kit package and the track being new. After that, it was nothing but boring and atrocious racing, adding insult to injuries. When NASCAR added PJ1, it stained the racetrack. So, in, so if the IndyCar drivers made one move on the PJ1, your race is done. Oh, and you can't make any moves in the corners too because it's still a one-groove racetrack. Coming into the 2022 race, I remember a lot of people were not happy to see another IndyCar race at Texas because of how the track is. But after some good racing during the second half of the race and a classic federal finish, apparently everybody wants Texas to stay like, what? Plus, I don't even know if they're going to stay after 2022, and hopefully that's the case. But just because it was one decent race in current Texas, it doesn't mean the track is good. There was even talks about Texas being off the schedule before that race. But because of one decent race, people are hoping to keep Texas for 2023. But because of the, the newest updates, by the way, my script is like a couple weeks old. But because of the news, the bombshell news about Texas Motor Speedway, I think IndyCar might not race at Texas. So again, let's hope IndyCar does not come back to Texas because of the way it is. But I know it's going to cost us another oval. So yeah. So yeah, all I can say is NASCAR and SMI ruined IndyCar racing at Texas Motor Speedway. Kentucky Speedway 2016 through 2020. Can somebody please tell me why people want IndyCar back in Kentucky? Did people forget that Kentucky became Texas before Texas became Texas? For those who don't know, after the 2015 uh, race weekend, Kentucky was getting their drainage pipe fixed. What they also did was add banking in turns 1 and 2, but keep the same banking for 3 and 4. I get that the racetracks need their drainage pipes fixed, but why did they have to fuck up the tracks like that for fuck's sake? 
After the reconfiguration, NASCAR racing at Kentucky uh, post-2016-2020 became atrocious. And no, Jeff Gordon, Kentucky Speedway is not unique. I don't want IndyCar back in Kentucky because of how atrocious the track is. It's bad enough that they had Texas. So we don't need another terrible cookie cutter like Kentucky and Texas back in the sport. Daytona National Speedway. Too dangerous, 1959 is the reason why. Talladega Super Speedway. I mean, it's obvious on why Talladega is on this list. Way too dangerous and too fast, just like Daytona. Originally, in 1980, there was supposed to be a USAC race there, but because of the first split between USAC and CART, it thankfully did not happen. The only time an IndyCar was on track was in 1974 when AJ Foyt drove a fast level of 287.854 miles per hour in a fast 43.956 seconds. That is the only time there was anything IndyCar related at Talladega Super Speedway. Dover International Raceway. IndyCar is just too fast at a track like Dover. Back in 1998 and 1999, the Indy Racing League raced at Dover. The race was filled with bad crashes and drivers being injured. Therefore, it is way too dangerous to see IndyCar race at the Monster Mile. Safe to say, Monster Mile is a NASCAR fan. Sorry, Jimmy Johnson. Fun fact, the inaugural IndyCar race was at Dover back in 1969. Future Racing Stories episode, maybe? Perhaps? If you guys are interested, leave a comment below. Darlington Raceway. I did a Racing Stories episode about IndyCar's very first race at Darlington back in 1950 and mentioned that they raced there three other times. Nowadays... There is no way that is going to happen. Not only the corners are way too narrow for an Indy car, not only that, but a lot of suspensions will also be broken as soon as they hit the wall. Therefore, the lady in black is not a fan of open wheel racing at her track. I think that is all I can think of. I want it to be realistic, like as realistic as possible. That is my list on oval tracks that should not be an Indy car. Now, this is the part where your opinions matter. Which ovals do you think IndyCar should not race at? That is going to do it for another video. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Impress 48 signing off. Goodbye, everybody.